Okay, we're going to talk about the Kettering ignition system, 12 volt ignition system, how we use 12 volts to generate in around 30,000 volts for ignition purposes. So the first thing we need to do with that is the spark plug. So there's our spark plug. And we're going to draw the symbol for a spark plug, which is that. And we know that one side of the spark plug is bolted directly to the chassis of the vehicle. In order to provide electrical energy, vehicles are fitted with batteries, and in our case, it's a 12 volt battery. So there's my 12 volt battery, and again, one terminal of the battery is bolted directly to the chassis. So, my problem is, I need to take these 12 volts and transform them up to around 30,000 volts, so as I have sufficient force behind the electricity to jump across this gap. Why do we need so much force? Well, the gap lives inside the combustion chamber, which is very, very dense atmosphere and highly compressed. So you need a lot of force behind the electricity to get it to jump across the gap. So in order to do that, I use an ignition coil. So there is the ignition coil. And you can see there, there's three terminals on the ignition coil. It has a positive and a negative and it also has a HT outlet. HT is just high tension outlet. So I feed it with 12 volts, I allow the 12 volts to run to ground and have a HT output. So I'm going to physically draw the, um, the ignition coil and then we'll draw the inside of it. So there's the coil, a physical representation of it. That's what it looks like and there's two terminals there. Now we know this terminal goes directly to the spark plug, that's fine. And we know this terminal here is the live in. In order to control the circuit, I'm going to fit a switch. And because it controls ignition, I'm going to call it the ignition switch. And inside the coil here, there's a, a set of windings. Because it's the first set of windings, I'm going to call it the primary windings. And the primary windings are quite heavy, and there's relatively few of them. And I just bring the wire out, and for the moment, I'm just going to bring that wire the ground. Okay, so now when I close this switch here, electricity flows through the primary windings and goes off to ground. One of the three effects of electricity is magnetism, so when electricity flows through this coil of wire, a very strong magnetic field springs up. My problem is, I want about 30,000 volts here, I've got 12 volts there. So I need to transform the voltage over to here. So. I can't have the same number of turns, I have to have many, many, many more turns. So, because this is the second winding, I'm going to call that the secondary winding. Now, let's look and see what happens. If I suddenly switch off this circuit here, magnetic lines of force will cut across these windings, and because the turn ratio is so much greater, I'm going to induce a very, very high voltage in this line here, which is able to force electricity across that gap. So how do I get the movement? I need movement to do this. Well, the way I get the movement is to suddenly open this circuit. So what I do here is I put a switch here, and the switch is more commonly known as a set of contact breaker points. And that's all they do. They just simply break contact in the circuit. So the points open and close. They just open and close the circuit. That's all. No more, no less. Okay. So let's look and see what happens. When I open the points here, the magnetic field suddenly collapses. Now I have a moving magnetic field moving across a conductor with thousands of turns of uh, windings in it, and that induces electricity at a very high voltage, which is able to jump across the gap. Now will that work? Well, let's look and see. Any electricity that starts life here has to be able to make its way back. In other words, there has to be a circuit. Let's see. Up across the spark plug, down into the chassis, return to the battery, across the battery, out the positive, this switch will be closed with the engine running, back in the primary, but look, we've no circuit there, so I need one more join, and it's that one there. I put that one in, that's known as the auto transformer connection. We're almost there now. The next thing we have to look at there, every time I open those points, I'm going to get a high tension spark, but don't forget, the magnetic field, as well as collapsing here, will also collapse across itself. The effect there is to raise the voltage here from 12 volts up to around 300 volts. 
which is capable of jumping across that gap because that gap is only in the atmosphere. It's quite easy to jump across it. 300 volts can jump that gap, no problem. If the 300 volts jumps that gap, the, mag the collapsing magnetic field stutters, doesn't collapse nice and cleanly, so I don't get a nice spark. So I have to make sure that I get a clean opening of the points. So what do I do? Well, I take a strip of metal here and I bolt it to the chassis. And I take another strip of metal here and I bolt it to the life supply. And I put an insulator in between them. And that insulator is known as a dielectric. This whole device here is known as a capacitor. So there's my capacitor. And like we said, all it is is just a negative strip of metal, a positive strip of metal, and a dielectric or an insulator in between the two. So how does that work? Okay, as the points are opening and the voltage rises here, electricity can flow into the capacitor or condenser, but it can't get to ground because of the dielectric. It can't get back out because all the electrons behind are pushing to get in, so eventually the condenser becomes fully charged. At that stage the electricity can get back out and will look to jump across the gap here, but don't forget the points have been opening all this time. And again this guy becomes fully charged, the points are completely open and there's no possibility of the spark jumping across the gap. So that's why the condenser is so important, it prevents arcing and burning there. So let's go and look at that now on an actual board. So here you can see I have an ignition coil and we see we have a live supply. So the live supply is here. So that's the live feed into the coil. It goes through the primary windings, comes back out along this wire and runs into the contact breaker points and runs to ground. Now I also have a condenser connected in parallel with this. Now you can see the condenser around here. taking the opportunity here to uh, take one asunder and you can see we've just unrolled it so there's the actual bits and pieces of the condenser and you can see it's quite a long strip so you can see all it is is a metal strip of conductor on one side an insulator here that sits in between them that's your dielectric and on the far side another piece of metal conductor so it's just foil and it all rolls up into a tube and we stuff it in and that's the condenser that we know. So one side is connected to live, one side is connected to chassis. So that's all that is. So now we're going to look at the system in operation. If we look in at the points now, right, you can hear a spark going there, but if we look at the points there, I'm just turning the distributor. The distributor is opening and closing the points. Every time it opens the points, I get a HT spark. So we're just going to look at that for a second there in operation. Okay, now if we go over and look at the spark plug here, we just have an adapted spark plug. And we can see, up this way, we can see the spark. So all I'm doing to make that spark is to close the primary and then open it with the contact breakers. Every time I open it, the magnetic field collapses across the secondary and generates a high tension spark. And that's your basic Kettering system. Thank you.